Okay, so we've uh, taken a history from our patient, we've examined the patient. The next step is to get the patient's permission to go ahead with the procedure. To do this, we need to give them information about the risks and the benefits and get their consent. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So, so Fraz, tell me what you know about cupping therapy already. Well, Dr. Sheikh, I don't really know a lot about cupping therapy and I hope you can help me with that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you what happens before, during and after the procedure. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go on to explain some of the, uh, the perceived risks and benefits of the procedure. Mm -hmm. At any point, if you don't understand anything or anything's not clear, just interrupt and let me know. Okay. Okay. So before the procedure itself, we ask you not to eat anything two to three hours before. And this is to allow your stomach to empty mm -hmm. and to, uh, allow the, the blood flow to maximize to the peripheries or the, the, the outer parts of your body right. for you to get the maximum benefit. Okay. Okay? If you take any medication, it's fine for you to take it on that day. Right. That's not a problem. Uh, if you want to drink something, it's fine, mm -hmm. but as long as it's not too sugary, water, okay. is, water is fine. Okay. Okay. Um, now, during the procedure itself, we position you in a comfortable position and we expose the part of the body that's going to need the cupping therapy. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, It's a, a very clean procedure so we make sure that all the equipment we use is disposable mm -hmm. uh, and sterilized and we dispose of that afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, And any part of the skin that we're going to t that we've cleaned once we don't touch again okay. and that's to minimize the risk of infection. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to show you the equipment. Okay. This is what we're going to use to do the cupping itself. Okay. If I could just uh, show, if you could just show me your hand. Yeah. This is a cup. Now they used to use bamboo cups, metal cups, horns, but thankfully we're not going to be using any of those. We stick to these, okay, which are disposable, and we just pop the cup onto your hand, mm -hmm. and then just apply some local suction. How does oh, that wow. feel? That feel okay? Yeah, I can feel it sucking yeah. already. It just feels like a little bit of pressure. Yeah. And now blood's coming up to the surface mm -hmm. and you can see it going red. Yeah. Okay. We just leave this on for two to three minutes mm -hmm. to increase the circulation. And then we take the cup off. And then we make some very small uh, superficial cuts to the skin okay. uh, with a surgical blade. And it shouldn't be any deeper than when you accidentally cut yourself. Right. Okay. Then we pop the cup back on. Mm -hmm and then reapply the suction and at this point blood will come out okay. okay there is a possibility that you feel a lot of heat at this point mm -hmm. or feel lightheaded or dizzy mm -hmm. and that's quite normal right okay once we've taken the cup off and uh, extracted the blood um, then we're going to clean that area again and dress it with a bandage. Mm -hmm. We do recommend that you keep that bandage on for at least 12 to 24 hours right. and avoid getting that area wet for that duration. Okay. And this is to, again, minimize the risk of infection. Right. Okay. Uh, the other thing we also advise is for you not to have such a heavy meal mm -hmm. afterwards. Uh, don't eat for at least two, three hours afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's okay to drink if you want to. And this is again to not divert all the blood to your gastric or mm -hmm. circulation in, in the stomach. Okay. And for you to get the maximum benefit. Right. You should also avoid any strenuous activity mm -hmm. for 24 hours mm -hmm. at least. Okay. Okay. Uh, at this point, do you have any questions for me? Well, you've explained a few things to me. You've explained what I should do before the procedure. Mm -hmm. um, so I should really avoid any heavy meals, mm -hmm. just have any light liquids like water. Mm -hmm. You've described the procedure to me as well, how you clean the skin and apply yeah. the cups mm -hmm. and how you take some blood out. I'm not sure how much blood does come out though. How much blood comes out? So, uh, if you ever had a blood test before? Yeah, yeah I've had so one of those. So, you, you remember those vials that they take? Right. Maybe just two of those vials maximum. Okay. And if you imagine it as a big tablespoon, mm -hmm. there shouldn't be any more blood than that in a cup. Okay, so that's reasonable. Yeah. And then you've also explained that you put a bandage on the area and I don't need to take that off for at least 12 to 24 hours. That's correct. And I should really avoid any heavy meals or any strange activity afterwards. That's correct, okay. And I may feel a bit sweaty during the procedure yeah. itself. Is there anything else that I should watch out for? Yeah, so I'm going to go through some of the risks of the okay. procedure. So during the procedure itself, 
as I said to you before, you can feel lightheaded and dizzy, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's not uncommon for people to faint, mm -hmm. okay? But some of the warning signs of that are you might feel a little bit dizzy, you right. might want to be sick, mm -hmm. you might feel that there's a, a feeling of blackness coming in front okay. of your eyes. Okay. If any of that's happening, please let me know right. and we'll stop the cupping immediately and get you into a comfortable position okay. and, and give you something to drink. Okay. Right. Now, after the procedure itself, as I said to you, the bandage stays on, mm -hmm. but because we've made a little cut on the skin, there's always a risk that you can in introduce bugs into the skin right. that can lead to infection. Okay. Okay, so the signs of that are that it may feel warm to touch, there may be some redness on the skin itself, right. or there may be some discharge or pus. Yeah. If you see any of these signs, just let myself or another health professional know okay. uh, and we can uh, hopefully treat that for okay. you. Uh, the other thing is, you can get a scarring from the site where we've made the incisions. Mm -hmm. Now, the risk of this is very small, but in people who have a darker skin or sensitive skin, uh, this can happen more often. Okay? Uh, if you've had surgery before and not had any problem with the scars, then you shouldn't have any problem with cupping. Okay. Is, is that all, does that all make sense? I mean, oh, yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. Um, I've got a, a leaflet here for you to uh, read in your own time. Right. Uh, and if you're happy with it, mm -hmm. we've just got a form to sign for you, yeah. uh, which just mentions everything which I've explained right. to you so far. Okay. One final question I wanted to ask. You've explained what the risks are, but um, in terms of the benefit for me, will it work for me? Okay, uh, it, that's a good point. The whole reason we're doing this is there is some benefit for your back mm -hmm. okay so we're treating your back and we're hoping that although there are some risks involved in the procedure that mm -hmm. the benefits will outweigh that okay and that you will get some pain relief right uh, and increased function from your for, from your back well fantastic i like to sign and have the procedure done please okay thank you thank you thanks